Hey, Dr. Alan Christensen here. I want to talk about salicylates. Are they friends or are they foes? <laughs> so salicylates are compounds we find in a huge variety of plant foods. They're only found in plant foods, and they're actually phenolic compounds that plants make as a defense against pathogens and stress. And the overall data is that they seem to be associated with health benefits. As of late, there have been concerns about salicylates being a source of symptoms or side effects. So I wanted to sort out, you know, how to think about them, and do you want more or do you want less of them? Well, to date, we've got studies showing that they, they may lower risk of heart attacks. There's been data saying that children who have weight struggles, they end up having less salicylate than those who have more, even when they compare the produce amount. There's also data saying they may improve mitochondrial function, improve glucose metabolism, and lower fatty liver. Now, here's the drawbacks. People can have sensitivities to hit to salicylates, and that's most clearly documented in the case of aspirin. Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, so it is a salicylate, and many people are just overtly allergic to it. They can get hives, sinus polyps, and it can even lead to severe respiratory distress. There's a thing called aspirin-induced asthma. So if someone does have symptoms or rashes from aspirin, it's clearly good to avoid. Now the quantity of salicylates we get from aspirin is much higher than that that we get from foods, but foods do have it. And the talk about salicylate sensitivity has wrapped around certain symptoms like hives, fever, swelling, irritable bowel, itching, memory loss, fatigue, tinnitus, cough, or nausea. And these are all things that are congruent with known salicylate allergy, but the drawback is there's not consistent lists on how much salicylate we find in foods. It can vary a lot even from within the same plant and within the season to season. This is also true of the, um, the histamine compounds that I've spoken of. It can be hard to predict exactly how much you'll come across, but even more so with salicylates. The other difficulty is that they're hard to absorb. So it's hard to know exactly how much will come into your body from consuming them. And there's also a lot of overlap between foods that have salicylates and foods that have histamines. So if someone does benefit in the case of hives or dermatitis doing better, they may be better off testing to see if it's histamine and then lowering histamine and identifying the cause behind that. So here's some foods that are thought to be higher in that. And again, only found in plant, plant foods. Uh, Granny Smith apples, cherries, strawberries, currants, raisins, kiwi, gala melons, peaches, nectarines, berries, and then also some veggies, asparagus, sweet corn, raw tomato, pureed tomatoes, and then condiments, things like ginger or oregano, cardamom, paprika. Uh, these things all can contain that. We also find histamine compounds in coffee or ciders or um, apple juice or um, some carbonated beverages as well. Now, there have been times in which these symptoms have reduced when people have taken high doses of fish oil. So one study was that people were seeing recurrent hives and asthma and even anaphylactic reactions that were so bad that they had to take prednisone. And in this group, they took a really high dose of fish oil, about 10 grams a day, and they saw a reduction in symptoms. Now the drawback is it was never really confirmed that dietary salicylates were the culprit behind them. It was a small group and it was a pretty high dose, so not a whole lot to draw from that. There have been studies looking at whether dietary salicylates can be triggers for bowel symptoms, but it's not been shown. It's not been, not been studied adequately and no, no clear data behind that. So in summary, you're probably better off including the foods that have salicylates than avoiding them. You know, the good side about aspirin is that it can lower inflammation and make platelets less apt to stick together. The drawback is with aspirin you get so much and in a different chemical form that it can also have adverse effects on preventing tissue healing, like in the gut lining or like in the kidneys. So one of the biggest triggers for leaky gut. But the dosage and the type does not apply in the same ways to food sources of salicylates. And the overall data is that the foods that have that are probably good, for, good foods to include. So if you do see symptoms like that and you suspect some type of an intolerant reaction to it, think also about immune stressors. And that can be airborne allergies, you know, indoor or outdoor, uh, dietary allergies, histamine intolerance. So if you struggled with 
reactions to foods or these symptoms that you can't know why they're happening, let's dig deep and let's make sense out of that. You know, all the doctors at Integrative Health can do a great job identifying and reversing most immune stressors and most food allergies in just a few months. So we'd love to help out. <laughs> but short version, don't stress too much about salicylates being a bad thing in general. If there's symptoms, let's sort them out. Otherwise, these are good, healthy foods that you're better off including than avoiding. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.